uh, I don't have an intro song. I would have Dire Straits Money for Nothing. But here he is. Mr. Hey. Creek. Welcome, welcome. Have you been following the stream so uh, far? Yeah, most of it. I, this has been okay. very engaging. I love Andrew. Chris, pleased to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. You're, you seem like a very nice guy. You're, you're too nice to be in this live stream. That's what I, that's what I, that's what I, that's what I said. Um, morning, Doug. How morning. are you today? Good to see a, a fellow conservative. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm a centrist. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Doug, I, I converted Doug to enlightened centrism and cultural Christianity, Christianity on the last, uh, well, last that's podcast. okay because I'm converting PF Young. So, Andrew, hey, we're all converting each other. Andrew, why ought you obey God? Why ought I obey God? Yeah. Via divine command, you realize I'm not a Christian apologist. I only argue from a secular framework, right? Why ought you obey God? I'm not a Christian apologist, Doug. Talk to a Christian apologist. Do you? Why ought we not have Christian? So you're saying you shouldn't, Doug? Uh, you, I you didn't saying... say anything, Doug. I said that I'm not authorized by the church to do Christian apologetics, and you're I not authorized it. by the church. You're That's correct. you're under the control of the church. Yeah. Wait, what is this? What, what, I'm under the, the yes, church? I'm under the dominion of strings? the church. <laughs> what? Where's your strings? Andrew, You're I've never heard this. I've never heard this response from you. Yeah, this is interesting. Why can't you just answer? Why, uh, you hold, on, well, hold on. We're bringing on Jim Bob. This is not a dog pile. Andrew's got reinforcements. First of all, let me answer the question. Okay. So that mm -hmm. you understand. I'm Eastern yeah. Orthodox. In order okay. to do Christian apologetics, I would have to be authorized to do so. I don't do <clears throat> Christian apologetics. I'm not authorized to do Christian apologetics, nor am I going to engage in Christian apologetics. I engage in secular argumentation. I'm a political debater. If you want to talk to a Christian apologist, I can arrange so that you can Are talk you a to a Christian apologist. I am. Do you believe that God gives commands? I'm not. I can't engage in that. Okay, hold on. Wait, real cannot quick, answer real that quick, question. Hold on, hold on, because I hold on. I didn't say I couldn't answer the question. I said I'm not authorized to engage in Christian you're apologetics, which is what you're asking me to do. <clears throat> Who's okay. your bishop? I'll tell priest? you what. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. No, no. Uh, okay, yeah, no, no, no. Doug, Doug, I'm gonna, Doug. I already let me, have let me, let me yeah, yeah. Let me, let me, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Why is it not okay for me to uh, adhere to my church? And if my church says that I'm not authorized to do Christian apologetics because I would need the blessing of a spiritual father to do so, why do you think that that's an own on me to obey that command? I'm not authorized to answer that question, Andrew. Right. Well, the thing no. is, is that I, I also wouldn't push. I also wouldn't push that you had to be. Okay, wait, hold on. Hold on. Why are we even having this discussion? I mean, you were cr <laughs> just cross-examining me, and then you don't even want and when to did I bring up God? Wait, 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 when wait, did wait, I bring wait, up wait, God, bro? When wait, did I bring up morality. God or Christian on. ethics? I'm going to mute everyone. It's hold about on. morality. Wait, wait, Why I want to say what God tells you to do. Wait, wait, hold it's on. a straightforward question about morality. Okay, hold on. He gave his answer, so hold on. Um, Doug, <laughs> hold on, Andrew. I have not heard this from you. I, I, when, when, I, when, when, we, when we use the word apologetics... <laughs> My assumption is talking about theology, what we, what we were talking about with phenomenal conservatism and all that, and like where do we ground our morals. If it's I have never secular, heard you say this. I don't know what, and I'm not forcing you to answer anything. I'm just curious because hey, I'm not – I'm going to answer your question. You. Okay, what does same, that mean? Same, exactly? thing, same thing with modern-day debate. Okay, I agreed to do a debate with some asshole over there, some fat guy. I don't remember his name, okay. right? Some douchebag. Uh, but I told him the same thing, right? These guys always want me to do Christian apologetics, and I told him I'm not authorized to do that. Uh, we can do a debate on whether or not how Christianity affects culture or, or these types of secular things, but I don't have the authorization. I'm an Orthodox catechumen. I could easily misrepresent the church uh, when their official canon. I'm not authorized to do that, nor do I have any inclination to do that. I do politics and secular debating. Now, if Doug from Pine Creek, who only does this type of argumentation, has any line of inquiries towards that, I'm happy to have that debate. Do you think Doug's going to do that, though? No. What Doug will do instead is he'll say, well, this I only want to talk about the one fucking thing on planet Earth that you're not authorized to discuss via your faith. So, Doug, do you have an argument for me which is in any way, shape, or form externalized to Christian apologetics? Because I don't think you do. I'm not authorized to, uh, to tell you. Yeah, that's right, Doug. That's what I thought, Doug. No, but seriously, why would I, why would I answer your questions if you don't answer mine? You don't have to, Doug. I'm just saying to you, in this particular instance... When I asked you if you were a Christian, I'm you not, were authorized to I'm answer that a, one. I'm not a... Uh, I'm not, Are you a I, Christian? Doug, repeat back to me what I told you. You're not authorized by... The I want you to church. repeat back what I said verbatim. 
I'm not authorized or at least to read the back to you verbatim. What right. You so you don't. So you don't fucking know. So just but when know. I asked you if you were a Christian, you answered that you were authorized to say you're a yes, Christian. Yes, I'm, and I'm authorized to tell you that I'm an Orthodox catechumen too. But that doesn't mean that I can engage on apologetics on behalf of Orthodoxy, and I'm not so going you, to. So what things are you authorized to talk about? And what things? I are already you gave you the complete list. Everything on planet Earth except Christian apologetics, Doug. Do you have any what inquiries I, what, towards what anything on planet Earth except Christian, Christian apologetics? apologetics what I'm asking is what is contained in the Christian apologetics? Uh, anything which is in relationship to arguing with an atheist or a secularist on behalf of their moral framework against the Christian moral framework. And uh, that's that's what would be the entailment. So is that how, what you do would, with me? Would Christian what, nationalism fall under uh, Christian apologetics? No, because what you're going to do, I would make secular arguments for why Christian nationalism is good, uh, which you would not be able to refute. Your entire line of inquiry in a Christian nationalism debate. We can talk debate, about that then. Doug, let me finish. Your entire inquiry in a Christian nationalist debate is just going to be, but God not real. You're not going to have any real arguments. And I'll demonstrate that for you as we get into this debate. Go ahead, Doug. What inquiries do you have for Christian nationalism? Yeah. Um... Is God real? It's called. Go ahead, Doug. Just say it. That's all you're gonna have, right, Doug? No, I, I'm. If uh, a Hindu in the United States mm -hmm. is in, under your whatever, I don't. We haven't even defined Christian nationalism yet. That would be a good place to start, I guess. Yeah. So, well, what? Why don't you define it then? Christian nationalism is the pushing for a synergistic relationship between the church and the state over an elongated period of time to get rid of the stigmatization of Christians also being able to rule instead of just secularists who seem to think that they're the only ones who are allowed to rule you know what under that definition i don't i'm not against it that's right doug that's right and i never thought that you would be i didn't think anybody would ever be i, against I think it. christians should have the right to to be in government yeah Jim Bob, are you qualified to do apologetics on yes. behalf of the church? I was going to ask the exact same question. Not, well, on, not, not on behalf of the Not on behalf of Yeah, but the, do you no. not understand, too, the distinction? That so like, hold on. Logic, I genuinely hang up, hang on. do not understand logic, your response Logic and that. reason and philosophy and everything on planet Earth is on the table. I just can't engage in direct, direct apologetics on behalf of the Orthodox Church. That's it. Adrian, How hard could it possibly on, be to direct your inquiries other than that? I have never heard you say this line in any conversation you've ever many, had. Many, many, many times, by the way. But everything that we were talking about, like phenomenal conservatism, theology and all that, is that all not logic people? and well, reason and everything? For Andrew. I could find a loophole for him. All right, what's can, the loophole? The loophole is, Andrew, can you imagine that you're not an orthodox? Can you speak on behalf of someone that you're not for a bit? Yes, I can make I could so what I could, can do is if you have a logical, philosophical, reasoned inquiry and you're not directing it towards my personal belief in okay, orthodoxy. So I'm not directing sure. it towards your personal belief. Why ought Jim Bob obey God? <clears throat> Jim Bob has a divine command to do so. So what? Why ought why he would that be that divine command? Why would that be a so what statement? I'm curious. Why ought Jim Bob I just follow answered your question. Doug. He has a divine command, self-explanatory. Yeah, okay, but here's my follow-up question. Why mm -hmm. ought Jim Bob follow that divine command? Be because if Jim Bob does not follow that divine command, what happens to Jim Bob? You tell me. Well, he goes to hell, had, right? I just asked you a question, right? You tell me. I don't know. You tell me. Well, if Jim Bob does not follow his divine command in his faith, not only would he be logically inconsistent in his faith structure, okay. but secondly, there could be some consequence at the end of that, which would be not good. Excellent. Now, mm -hmm. now Chris could give the exact same answer to you when he, you asked him mm -hmm. why he ought to do certain things. Yes, but try to remember that. You're uh, welcome, Christian, Chris. Try to remember, though, <laughs> Doug, try to remember that just because there's overlap between consequentialism, deontology, and Christian ethics does not mean that you don't have uh, occasionally duties which would overlap with consequentialism. That's not a good argument, by the way, Pine Creek, Doug, because if there's overlap, the problem. Just, just having overlap is meaningless. You haven't solved any problem. What's, pro what's the problem? What how is the you, problem you think you solved? You were trying to question how do you get a not from an is, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I asked you, how does Jim Bob get an ought from an is? You answered very correctly, in my opinion. You gave a great answer. 
Mm -hmm. And well, now that's not... a guy like Chris could give a similar answer, if not exact same answer, just leaving the God part out. How? You're welcome. How does he leave the God part out? By not saying the word God. So then we've got, so then we've moved into preference. Yeah. And Jim Bob's preference is to it's obey not a God. preference, not preference. What? It's, it's, oh, he doesn't have free will. Well, it's not preference if it's divine command, right? Oh, it's divine makes it special. Also, Why well, Pine, Pine Creek, the, <laughs> the, the, the preference part wouldn't be the thing that determines because I can prefer, I could have a preference of uh, doing something that feels good in the short term, but maybe uh, harms me in the long term, or, yeah. or maybe I just don't care like that it hurts me or, or whatever. So, I mean, our preferences can be uh, change um, moment to yeah. moment, right? We can be completely inconsistent with our preferences day to day. Or you can day. be programmed to have that preference. Programmed by what? Like, well, I got to pee. Don't say the N word. That's it. Go ahead. We're not gonna. We're not gonna wreck your stream. Uh, program. Program by what? God. N word. N word. N word. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, program by what? God. I said three times now. Okay, so we're pre-programmed pre by God. So, like, the, the Calvinist argument. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Chris, the problem is, as Pine Creek already just conceded to, is that even in his worldview. Everything's determined, including beliefs, which is why Andrew said, "Why didn't you? Why don't you? Why aren't you a Christian?" He said, "Because I'm determined not to be." But the the problem, Pine, Pine Creek, and I don't know if you've come up against this, is that the worldview itself, you have no access to knowledge at all. Like it's impossible. Yeah, you can't. Do you see why? Why it's impossible? Why it's impossible to have knowledge depends how you define knowledge. Uh, any evaluation of a truth claim. That, any. That, yeah, any evaluation, I, not even the result of it, which would be knowledge. Any evaluating, the very method of evaluating two different claims yeah. this is, is impossible. Argument, right? Well, no, don't. It's not about it, framing what it is. It's that it's it's the consequence of let's I'll put it simple. Pine Creek makes uh, an opinion, right? Opinion A. Yeah. Jim Bob makes opinion B. Now, Chris, as a third party, he's trying to evaluate between the two things, right? Yep. That's that's kind of what argumentation is, right? That's what we do here, correct? Yep. Okay, so if opinion A is determined and opinion B is determined, then so is Chris's evaluation. So what methodology outside of that mechanism Could do we, we have access truth? to any knowledge? Yeah. How do we know? How do Through tested uh, observations? That's determined. So that's, that's determined. determined. Yeah. yeah, but what, why does it, it being determined make it less so? Well, even because, if it was, hang on, even that makes no sense. Your your rejoinder question like example, actually doesn't doesn't make any sense. What he's saying that it's also under your worldview. So since it's also under your worldview, you have no way to arbitrate who's telling the truth, who has the knowledge, who doesn't, because it's all predetermined according to you. Well, no, but my question is, just because it's predetermined, why does it not make it knowledge? Because you don't know what knowledge is and isn't right. if the conclusion. How do you know to, what knowledge is or isn't? Jim? Well, whether well, he does or he doesn't answer first, his question. First, yeah, first deal with the, your your situation. Okay, so let's say the question is, how do I know this pen will fall towards the ground if I let go? So here's one way we can do it. Yeah. Is that good enough? No. <laughs> Why? Begging the question. I've proven nothing. That's just a phrase that people put out when they don't know what to say. Begging the question. No, no, Andrew no, no. It a lot. The problem, <laughs> problem, problem is, Pine Creek, if you were just predetermined. That's because people are pen, always begging the question. Right. If you were if you were determined to drop the pen. I answered you your question. I'll answer mine. How do you know? You didn't answer the question. Yeah, I did. You dropped the I pen. I demonstrated it. You dropped the pen. Oh, That's not an no. illustration in, or nor an answer to the question. You didn't do That's anything. That's predetermined that you dropped that pen, Pine okay, Creek, according me, to you. Let me do this then. I'll be very kind to you guys. I don't know. Now answer my question. How do you know what How knowledge know what? is? Knowledge? Yeah. Well, at first I would look at what is truth, what is knowledge, right? How do we categorize Yeah, and I asked you that, that to define it, and you defined it. So how do you know what, what is true? How do you know you have knowledge? How do I know I have knowledge? Well, no, I have faith that I have knowledge. You're stumbling a little I, bit, aren't you? But, but how do you on. know? Hang on. You're, Pine Creek. you're not letting me answer. Pine Creek. <laughs> also, why would we care to justify to somebody who doesn't know what knowledge is? There's yeah, no answer we could give 
that would be satisfactory because you have no metric for which to evaluate okay. it by your Justified own admission. true belief. True. Okay. He that? just said hey, he couldn't true justify belief. any true belief. Justified he doesn't know. Hold on, he doesn't hold on, know. Hold on, hold on. Pine Creek, justified go ahead. Chris belief. said justified true belief. Is that... Is that Jim, Jim Bob, yeah. How do you know what's true? I said I have faith. What does that it's mean? Not, it's not a knowledge claim. What, what does that mean? Oh, so you don't have knowledge? No, I have, I have faith. All knowledge is faith-based. That's my position. Agree. Oh, 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 oh. conservatism. That's what okay, I've been hang saying. On. Hang on. This is getting good. Define faith for me. Um, faith is um, basically evidence for that which is unseen. Everyone evidence. has faith. Evidence, you say? Like no. dropping a pen? No, un no unseen. <laughs> evidence unseen. Unseen. Yeah. But, so but you have mind. knowledge of the pen dropping. Like, that is knowledge. Like, for instance, you... for instance, for instance. No, no, you have, you have, you can, you can watch a pen drop and you have faith that it's going to do that again, right? You don't know it's going to. But you, oh. you have knowledge on, that is just on, dropped. Hold on, No, yeah, let Chris, me ask Pine stop. Creek. Go ahead, Jim Bob. You have faith in the regularity of nature, correct? Yes. I'm not okay, going to drop great. this bacon. I just want to let you know that. That, that would bacon. be a moral so, crime. So, yeah, be a so what if, so when you ask me your question about knowledge to me again. My question to you? Yeah. Is that if everything's determined, how do, what methodology do you have for knowledge? Faith. But faith is determined. Right. Under your so that doesn't make, make that does, doesn't that doesn't does, get you out of anything. That make faith any less. Well, in your view, what would that have to do with anything? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anything. Anything. My you answer say, is Doug, faith, Jim Bob. Yeah, you, we, yeah, we get that. That's your answer. Out. Your answer makes no that's, sense. You're not taking my. What view. faith doesn't you're, make sense? No, that's no, not trust. what I said. I said the I answer doesn't make any sense. Your it's trust like you do, is – no, it's not the same. Why I'm is not it a not determinist. The same? I'm not a determinist. You but are. Why is, but hold on. Why is uh, – Doug's point, if I understand correctly, is that the faith – you know, it's determined that he will have faith in it. But why does that – why does one – why does an individual being determined to have faith reduce the validity of faith? Because of this. We because Jim Bob actually has some proof. And Doug has done. So here's the proof that Jim Bob has. Jim Bob can say that there is unseen things that he can have faith in that are true. And let me give you some examples. The laws of logic would be an example. Mathematics would be an example. These are examples that he can indicate and point to that he has faith in that are that you cannot empirically demonstrate at all. You can't smell them. You can't taste them. You can't touch them. You can't see them. You can't do any of those things. However, they're true, even though they're unseen. Okay, so. How do you know they're true? When he said because uh, hey. the, because there, it would create an actual performative contradiction okay. if they weren't true. Right. Andrew said evidence of the things unseen, the laws of logic, would be an example of that, right? Yeah, or the mind. A mind is even even more okay. to the point. Mind, laws of logic, logos sort of type deal. Okay, so Doug, what's wrong with that? Well, the, 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 nothing, the evidence I, of faith. Nothing. I'm just saying that these are presuppositions. So you have them too? Yes. Okay, so what's the problem? None. Well, the problem with your Great. view is that you're <laughs> you you know, you know, cultural about, Christians. Plus, we're all no, cultural Christians and white citizens. All right, Chris, go ahead. What is your hang on? What is your accounting? So stop, stop, stop. What is your accounting for him then, Doug? Yeah. Do you need to account for your presuppositions, Andrew? Do you? Yeah. Okay. How do you account for yours? By using the, the the knowledge that there are transcendental categories which exist, which are unseen, that you can only have faith in, but they still exist. Like logic. Like logic. Stop. Provably, this is, hang on, this is provable from you. The justification is anything to the contrary must not be true other than they were created. We they were agreed. created, Doug. We're that's green. the distinction. Okay, that's the difference. One's created and one's not. Yeah. How do you know that it was created? Because it, it, it would be um, an obfuscation to the contrary if it was what? not created. It would have to, if you're looking at it uh, from the correct framework, right? The correct framework. It would, it, they actually have to be created. They have to be. There's no possible way to create a contradiction why if they were not created. Existed? The laws of logic always existed? Yeah, why can't it be eternal? Because past? nothing which exists has always existed. This is basic God deduction. doesn't exist? This is basic deduction. God doesn't God, exist? No, God, so you would, have to have, you would have to have an unmoved mover. <laughs> no, God would my definitely not. Behind my back. <laughs> no, God would be in another category. Yeah, that's uh, the unmoved special. mover. God's special. All right, hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on, hold you, on. Well, hang on, Doug. By your own, by your own deduction, does, has everything always existed? Yes. 
It not has everything, not everything, but the, in totality, I believe the cosmos has always existed, the eternal past. And and what are you basing that on? Uh, presupposition. Okay, so you're not basing it on anything. What do you base now, let me, eternal existence no, on? Evidence. I'm going to give you some evidence here using your own logic. Have you ever seen ever, ever, anywhere? Anything <laughs> I know which <laughs> which exists that was not created. Have I ever seen something that exists that was not created? That's biological. That's biological. Mm -hmm. That's biological. So, like a plant, anything. Well, a plant is actually no formed anything from a seed. Any that's biological. Right. So when you say created, you mean not ex nihilo. Yeah, it's just anything biological. Yeah, I have never seen something ex nihilo be created from ex nihilo. No, I haven't. Okay. Do you think that, but you have faith that there must have been something which was biological, which came from something that is not biological. Okay, stop. Hold on. Whose Discord notifications are going off? Oh, not mine. Mind. Mind. I'm sorry about that. Is that right, Doug? Okay. Do I believe that something biological came from something non biological? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. So. As we as we track this back, then, yeah, this is contrary oh, to your own logic. Evolution's fucked. So your own, so your own logic, <laughs> so your own logic here is saying, look, all the evidence that I can see everywhere at all times is that all biological things only come from biological things. How can you make the jump that something uh, other than biological created something that is biological? Oh, that's a great question. How can I, well, it seems to me it, it, throughout all my experience that material things come from material things. How can it be that something material can come from all my experience? How can I actually even fathom the idea of something material coming from something non-material? Experience isn't Great material. Great point, Andrew. Is experience material? Yeah, it's. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> Yes, you did. You didn't answer. Oh, the question. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I did answer your question. question. Logical, Moxing the question doesn't help answer the question, Doug. I answered your question by showing the absurdity of your. You didn't show anything because really you didn't. yourself believe something material came from something non-material, even though we have no experience of that. You agreed with your. I, I called you before, and you agreed with one big miracle. Remember? Yeah, I remember, remember that. Remember what that? What was that miracle? Uh, existence existence right it's yeah. not consistent like the laws of physics and the, and the regularity can't justify or account for the existence of the laws of physics no, like, just like you can't account for god why 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 is god well god i could argue i could argue coherently for why i believe in god no that's not the question why does god exist why does god e eternality you can't ask why that assumes there's a pre-god yeah. what an eternal God, why does God exist, right? Yeah. That would mean there's something outside of God that gives us reason. Right. Now, you notice right. that a naturalist can give the exact same answer you just gave. They can't. No, because natu nature, sure can. nature doesn't give reasons. There's no, no con concept. Is there there's a no reason, there's is there no a reason why God exists? Pine Creek, there's no concepts or argumentation found in nature. Is there a reason why God exists, Jim Bob? A reason? Not that I can come up with. Okay, why can't I give that same answer? Uh, for what? What do you mean? If, if you posit God, exist? the well, question wait, just wait, moves one wait, step wait. back. Wait, can, can if you, you were to ask me, Jim Bob, why does the universe exist as opposed to not? And I say that I, I don't, the question doesn't even make sense. Yeah, I would say I wouldn't ask that question. I don't think it's a good Okay, question. well, fair enough. So Protest Protestantism would not fall under Christian nationalism. It would be Orthodox or it would Catholic? not be my. It would not be my goal for it. My goal for it would not be uh, under Protestantism, as there is no unified Protestant Church to have a synergistic relationship. So would it have to be Orthodox Christian nationalism? That's yeah, what I would propose. Would be Orthodox? Yes. You should call it Orthodox nationalism instead of Christian nationalism to make. We it all. Clear. I only consider Orthodox Christians. So. What about Catholic? What if it was? A, what if there was a Catholic movement? Would you support that? Because they do that have that, a coherent church. I think that that would be superior to uh, Protestantism, but not by much. Okay. So. I could, Doug or Chris, if you guys, yeah, have I got, I got some ask. very practical questions about Go right Orthodox ahead. nationalism. If a Hindu's praying on the street, should he be jailed? I didn't call it Orthodox nationalism. Call it what I called it. Okay, Christian nationalism. Christian if nationalism. a Hindu's praying on the streets to a false god, should he be jailed? No. Um, if Just a, 
if an <laughs> if an orthodox uh, a bunch of orthodox people in government decide that adultery should be f uh, punished through stoning would you support that no nor would they so okay. the so the thing is is that uh, everything which is within the confines of christian nationalism is based around reformations reforming people to society now if you were to say that there could be uh, some type of extreme punishment for uh, women who are routinely unfaithful and neither the state nor the church can can reform them uh, then we deal in such punishments now just not for that particular thing but we do deal with such punishments now for other things that we agree are crimes but i think that unfaithfulness is a significant crime i think it should be considered such but why would, did you say you wouldn't support stoning of an adulterer well because what you're what you're talking about there is like the second they do it should should they get dragged out and be no, stoned no 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 they mm -hmm. get tried convicted and then the the punishment is stoning on what basis would you say that i think bad, that or... if the i think that if the offenses are egregious enough but i don't think the death penalty even for unfaithfulness or they will ever be egregious enough well it was in the old testament that's nice well you know i'm not can you notate, not can you notate the, the that i'm not testament. jewish Right. But the, the New Testament the, superseded much of the laws mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. Yeah, can you, know you notate that? that I'm not proposing uh, um, Judeo wait laws? Wait a minute. Are you saying God never commanded that? That's not what I yeah. said. I'm talking I'm specifically you. about Christian nationalism and that that's not our proposition. I know, but in regards to Christian, Christian who cares nationalism. If it's co who cares? Whatever your critique is for its coherency, what is the problem with that law? Well, I'm because, asking you about the details of Christian nationalism, and I'm and you and said I you just would gave not you those details. Stoning. There's not going to be anything which is egregious enough under a Christian national uh, position. It unfaithfulness would not be egregious enough to kill somebody over. But it was in the Old Testament. Even if it was in the Old Testament, that, God what, that have to do with the current proposition that I'm giving you. Yeah, Doug, don't, you you are aware that the the New Testament. Can you no answer my question, Doug? What would that Testament, have to do? Right? With what I currently propose right now, Doug. Yeah, I'll tell you what it has to do. Okay. Christianity has to do with God. Mm -hmm. God commanded at a certain point in history mm -hmm. to to stone the unfaithful wife. So there is precedent. If And this was with the Jews. You were right. So there is precedent on how God acts in history for a certain group of people called the Jews and so I'm asking you, why would you be against the stoning of adultery if there's precedent of this is how God has acted in certain situations in the past? This why is could that not be used on. in the future? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. But this is an unreasonable criticism, which would also be applied to everything bad a secularist has ever too. done, ever, in history, ever. They, the same criticism would be used back the other direction. Yeah, I would no just God say, okay, what if you knew? Who, who, why would that matter for the criticism? Because God is supreme. Why would that no. matter for the criticism of the proposition, Doug? The yeah, criticism is just because it says in the Bible that at one point God thought. And that what's this my was current just, proposition? He mandated. This. Okay. What did it, what did I say? Hang on. What Chris, did I say the current proposal would be for the laws of Christian nationalism when it came to being unfaithful? And if you think, well, but one time God proposed that. Fine, you can think that, but what am I proposing? Do you think that? Well, I would just yeah. like to know what is or this Chris, process what, what, by which what? you pick and choose. Doug, repeat, repeat back to me what my proposition here is. Your proposition, as you said, that the real issue with uh, Christian nationalism is to reform people. Yes. From the inside and also, out. what did I say about unfaithfulness being egregious that it was That it wasn't egregious enough for stoning. Right. So then, then, under, the what, system, so then under the system that I'm proposing, which is that we would not kill people who are unfaithful, because it's not an egregious enough crime, is your criticism to that that I should because you think that God commands me to, Doug? No, my criticism is is that since there's precedent, since Chris Christianity has to do with God, and since mm -hmm. God has actually set a precedent for certain contexts to have that type of justice, and Christian nationalism is a certain context that deals with justice, uh -huh. on what basis do you reject that example and precedent because all laws are most laws that's are a great question yeah. answer that andrew and then i want to yeah. make a point great question so we would move towards what are called christian ethics are you familiar with them doug i'm familiar with christians and i'm Doug's familiar a cultural with ethics Christian. but you no, are you familiar well with <laughs> with are you familiar with christian ethics uh yes 
Okay, if you're familiar with Christian ethics, are you, do you recognize that the death penalty is only set in Christian ethics for extraordinary cases? Yes. Okay, so in this particular case, this would not be considered an extraordinary case. Was whether or not you testament. think, whether or not you think that it should be based on Old Testament law, would not be in line with the Christian ethics. But I'm asking, being why do you right reject now. it based on, like, why do you reject? I follow it? Christian ethics. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Because, Doug, it is quite clear that in the New Testament, certain things in the Old Testament are no longer relevant, like making sacrifices. Because Jesus, Jesus said not a dot nor a tittle will be removed from the yeah, law. Yeah, but do you remember when you let a prostitute who was about to get stoned go? And that was said, a go later and no more. That's yeah, but do you remember okay. when you said that? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. Hold on. Yeah, do you remember that part, Doug? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. It also Doug, yes. Later. No. Okay, okay. Hold on, hold <laughs> yeah. on, hold on. So, okay. And so we're, we're, we're Christians, that. so we follow, we follow, wit do we follow the Torah, Right. Right, new edition, a, a guidebook, or do we follow the New Testament and the teachings of Jesus Christ, which are the central foundation for Christian ethics? Which thing do you think we follow, Doug? You follow Jesus. Right. Doug is a cultural right. Christian. He knows this. He's just and Jesus is God, okay. and God on, actually the cultural on. Christian. Doug is a cultural Christian. He's a reluctant one, as his moniker suggests. Okay, and Andrew, I know you, you got to go soon, so I, I'll just kind actually, of broaden this yes, out. Yes, I do. Hang on, I got. I actually got to roll now. Doug, it was nice meeting you, by the way. And if you yeah, want to have the Christian nationalist debate. I'd love to have it, but I already know it's just going to be why God real, which has nothing to do no, with no, the proposition no, no, no. of the Christian nationalism. Debate. Hey, Andrew, before you go, um, I probably don't want to debate on Christian nationalism because we probably agree on too much. Because yeah, probably <laughs> because like I watch videos of the stuff that's happening in California with people stealing and robbing with uh, and not getting charged, and it just sickens me. It's ridiculous. And, and you and I are, and Jim Bob are, and maybe all of us here are aligned that we we actually need to get back to more law and order in this country. And I actually do think the Christians would help us in that endeavor. A lot of the trans issues, I think, are horrendous at what they're doing to kids. And so we're probably agreed on a lot of this stuff. But my main concern is if Christian nationalism happens, am I going to be okay? Are you guys going to kill me because no. I'm an atheist? Okay, so we're good. Nor, right. nor was we're that, all cultural Christian. Nor was that ever a proposition. However, the Christian nationalist may kill you if you violate Christian ethical protocols. Like the what? same way that. Me, that me, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Stop, stop, Doug. I'm finishing. Okay. The same way that secularists will. Okay, so there's no difference between them. Then. No, there's a difference. There's going to be a distinction in ethics. We like the state's not going to be allowed to promote degeneracy. The state's not going to be allowed to promote any of that. That's like not okay for them to do. It's not okay for them to push degeneracy and promote degeneracy. Why would that be okay for the state to do? Why gay, should the state do that? It's can ridiculous. gay people still get married? No. Marriage is a sacrament. It's a religious sacrament. Why? What, what the hell does secularists need to get married for? Well, marriage is in many different ways. I actually ways. agree with that, Paul. What? Like, um, I, I, I honestly don't think marriage should be a thing. I mean... Yeah. Are you like a libertarian? You think the well, there's no there's no it? reason for it. like Doug has he's the victim of his own logic. He understands that this is a holy sacrament. Doug is, Doug is a victim there's of actually his own no failings, principle for here sure. for why well, a secularist should get married. Like, but what's interesting about marriage, Andrew, is in the United States currently, you don't need God to get married, but you do need the government. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, they switch and they, you want to flip a, it, right? Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. In fact, I want the church to have dominion over divorce, even. And I think that the state has been a terrible arbiter. And this is why you have men who are left behind and you have men who get such a raw deal. <laughs> men get screwed over. And the thing is, is that uh, the dominion of the church, I think, would do very well in the domain of divorce. And I do think that some people would quit the church to move over to the state in order to grant them a, uh, uh, a divorce. I think that they would do that. But it's like that's how you weed See, them out. I'm honestly right? conflicted about this because I agree with you that divorce is one of the worst things that can happen to kids yeah um, it is and i hate it like i rather tell parents be unhappy as long as you're not beating each other up and you can live together be unhappy for the sake of the kids and so many so many people are not that's actually really good advice doug that's yeah. way more base than i thought you cultural be. christian doug but <laughs> but i also do think like when you were talking about christian nationalism as reforming from within like when the government starts legislating do not get divorced especially if you have kids that's legislating from without like from outside external well, well hang on the thing is is that the people who are breeding 
Doug are Christians, essentially. Those are the ones who are doing the breeding is the religious people. The non-religious really aren't. So if you're looking for who should govern the marriage, shouldn't it be the religious institution anyway who is promoting that you have the children to begin with? Because the state is not. And so I do think that there would be better arbiters over who over uh, granting marriage and granting divorce. They're also an intricate part of the community of a religious person, whereas the state is not. The state it cannot really look at your situation because they don't know you. Your church knows you. Your spiritual fathers know you. They know your individual situations and can help far this better. This is why I'm a conservative, Andrew, because I, yeah. I agree with you on that. Like Cultural Christian. Grassroots up. Okay, uh, hold on. Andrew. Mute you. Andrew, yeah. you got to go. Right? Wait, I got to go. I got to go. I have a question, Doug. See you guys later. Know. It was nice All to right. meet you, Doug. I'm sure that we'll talk sure. in the future. You can come on the Crucible whenever you want to. I'm I sure feel like you'll enjoy though, yourself. When, when I, if I was to come on your show, I would have to have a cigar. <laughs> then have a damn cigar. Stop yeah. it. You know? But my wife doesn't want me to smoke inside. <laughs> Those oh. Mennonites. Well, now I understand that. All right. Well, All right. I'm out of Peace here, guys. Andrew. Have a Thanks great for coming on. Thank you. See you.